So now that we're ready to signal at a second's notice with our active signals in our pocket, let's talk about building the actual smoke generator that'll allow us to signal at a much farther distance. Uh, so well, the first thing I need to do, the first step is to build the tripod. And I'm gonna build a tripod using lashings, but I'll tell you up front that I'm not gonna use the traditional Boy Scout lashings because they just take too much cordage. And I've only got, you know, very limited amount of cordage with me here and I want to conserve that as much as possible. So I'm going to kind of modify those traditional lashings and show you how to do some cordage conservation lashings uh, that are adequate for this because it's not going to be structural to where I need to you know put my body weight or anything like that on it. So I don't really need those big robust lashings. Let's take a closer look at the knots I'm going to use to make this tripod and like I said before I'm not doing a full you know traditional lashing because I want to conserve cordage. So I'm going to make a loop with a fisherman's knot. So a fisherman's knot is opposing overhands that are tied on each side. I'm gonna bring this around. And for an overhand, I'm just gonna make a loop around the other tail. And I've got that loop. Then I'm just gonna come right back through. And that's what I'm left with. So if I hold the end and hold the standing in here and pull that tight, I've got an overhand knot. Now, I'll flip it over tie the same thing on the other side. Make a loop, come back through, pull it tight. So that can be adjusted, but I'll just pull those two together and that locks them down. Then I'll take that, flip it over once. Might be too big. Then I can take those, put that around what's going to be my tripod. Take my center pole, and I can start flipping that around. And that establishes my tripod. Now the reason I'm building this on a tripod is one, I want to get it up off the ground a little bit because the grass is high here. I want, not only am I using this for, for a ground to air signal, but I'm also using it as a visual signal for something that may be passing by low. So I want to get it up higher so that it can be seen from the horizon as well as from the air. Uh, and I also want to take advantage of airflow coming from underneath to that fire because this is going to be covered you know, with green material that actually generates that smoke. So, once this is stable, I've got my tripod set. From here, I'm gonna take my next three, and I'm essentially gonna lash a platform around here that gives me a base to put my fire on. So I'm gonna lash those on real quick. I need some more cordage. For this one, I'm gonna do kind of just a reduced diagonal lash or a square lash just enough to hold that platform up. And the conservation of cordage, I'm trying to do everything with about you know two feet or less of cordage for each lash. Knife's a little overkill for that. So what I'll do is next, I'll tie what's called a timber hitch around one side. For the timber hitch, I'm basically making a loop, twisting that several times. Once I've twisted it several times, I'll take the other end and pass it through, put that over, and then I can tie that tight. That's the beginning of my timber hitch. Decide what height I want this. Slide it to where I need it. I'm going to come around the back side, up over the top, back around. And then once I get here, I'm going to kind of try to finish that with just a clove hitch or two half hitches, the same thing.
that holds that side secure. Same thing for this side. Okay, so let's take another look at this reduced cordage uh, square lash that I'm going to do on here. I'm going to start with a timber hitch, and a timber hitch is very simple to tie. I'm just going to form a bite at the end of the line, and a bite means it doubles, but it doesn't cross over itself. Pinch those ends together, then I'm going to twist that five to seven times, Maybe a little more than that. Five to seven times. Then I'm going to pinch that together, and I formed a loop here. Take my other end, and I'm going to come right through that. Place that over the end if I'm able. If not, then I have to tie this like we discussed. And pull that tight, and that timber hitch is actually going to bind on those crossings the tighter I pull this. this. So I've already started up on the top. I'm going to come around the upright. Then I'm going to come back down. Now from the bottom side, I'm going to come around. And this is where we start making our square. Then I can come up again, around the back side, back under. And normally I would do four to six of these wraps before I started wrapping, but I'm going to go ahead and change direction now. So to change direction, instead of doing these wraps, I'm going to start frapping and pulling these wraps together. So I come over the top of both of those wraps, pull tight, come underneath both of those wraps, pull tight, give it one more frap so that I have two wraps, two fraps, pull that tight, and then I finish on the opposite side with a clove hitch. So all I have to do is make a half hitch first. Slide that over close. And a clove hitch is nothing more than two half hitches. So I'll throw another half hitch in. And pull that tight. And that is a reduced cordage square lash. So that's fairly secure. It's not structural like I was saying. It just has to hold up the platform that I'll put my fire on. Do that two more times. Now, once I have my tripod built and the framing to actually put my base on. I'm just going to put my base on here real quick. And then from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to establish a fire lay that's ready to go with my tinder, my matchstick size kindling, all the way up, and I'm going to fill this with what's, a, what's basically going to be a flash fire uh, to where I can quickly light it, it'll quickly ignite, and it'll quickly generate smoke. So I'm going to build that in here. Start off by placing my tender inside. I'm going to use a lot of tinder. This doesn't need to burn very long, but it needs to burn right now. So what I'll do is I'll make a bed of these pine needles. That's my coarse material. Take a little bit of that cedar bark. Place that inside. And then, because this is an emergency signal that I need to get lit right now, um, the weather's great right now, but it doesn't mean it's going to be great when I have to light this. So I'm not going to mess around. You know, if I if I have a good fire starter, a good emergency fire starter, I'm going to use that now. Uh, this is some Insta Fire that I'm going to use. I'm going to fill this nest up with this, so that when it comes time that I have to actually light it, I want to be able to just hit it quick 
and for it to take off so I can move on to the next one. Um, so I'll put this in there, fill this nest up with that, and then I'll build everything else up around that. And that allows me to light it pretty quickly. When I was selecting this material as well, I was really careful to make sure that every, almost every stick that I picked up, if it felt sketchy, I would throw it away. But uh, every stick that I'm placing on here, I want to be bone dry. And reason being is I don't want to take any chances. So when I'm picking up a stick, probably a better example, when I'm picking up a stick, if I can hear it snap like that, I know that it's dry and it's good for the fire. So, based on my shelter location, my shelter is over to my right hand side. I'd be coming out of the wood line, so I'd be lighting it at this angle. So I'm leaving myself a little bit of a space right there so that I can get to that emergency Instafire tender first. And I'll build everything else up around that. Put my smallest stuff on first. Then I'll go from kind of matchstick size to pencil size. Probably leave these a little longer. go to a little bit larger. I only need this to burn for 30 seconds to a minute to generate that smoke. Maybe a little longer. So I'm going to set myself up for that. I'm not going above. Try to run. I'm not going above, you know, kind of my thumb size kindling. I'm not going to sustain fuel on here. Now I've got a good base for a fire that I can get going. Now I need to pack the outside of this with as much green material as I can put on there, leaving myself a window 
to get into that tinder. So I've got some of the white pine boughs that I'm going to put on here. And this is just kind of a however you can make them stick. This will also give you a little bit of protection from the weather. But the main purpose of it is, is to generate smoke. That green material is going to put off a nice white smoke. And that's something we can talk about here. You know, the background here is green that I'm expecting to try to contrast it against. So white is a, is a good choice for that. Um, if I was in a snow covered area, you know, white smoke isn't the goal. You would need something like plastic or rubber or foam, something to that effect to create a black smoke to contrast against that environment. But in this case, green is going to create the white smoke that we need. So this is the completed smoke generator. So I've got a complete fire laid built on the inside of a platform. I've got it up off the ground so that the air can flow through there and it gets it up higher to be able to see it easier on the horizon. I've got lots of green material that is going to generate a lot of white smoke to contrast against the green background that I'm trying to contrast again. I've got a little window right here facing back towards where I'm going to build my shelter of emergency instant fire tinder that I know is going to light just like that when I need it. So, I set this up ahead of setting up my shelter because I want to be able to light something if I hear something in the meantime. So, um, what I'll do now is I'll go in and I'll probably, uh, you know, go to the, the shelter location that I picked out before and I'll start establishing my shelter now and then I'll start thinking about my other priorities. Um, but this is on standby ready to go. And once I've got through the actual priorities that are going to be life sustaining, I'll come out and I'll build two more of these because as we talked about during the signal kit portion of this video, we talked about three evenly spaced anything is a universal distress sign. And that is going to let somebody know that this isn't just a fire, this is three equally spaced fires. Somebody needs help down there. They have a better chance of being rescued. 